I never drink. Why? Step into the hidden world of Hollywood's darkest secrets. In less than a minute, we're about to dive headfirst into the scandalous world of Hollywood's boozy secrets. Are you ready to explore the lives of the 20 worst alcoholics in Tinseltown's history? Hold on a second, there's a twist to this story. The names mentioned here were actually suggested by you. Tequila, blah, blah, blah. a bottle. Number one, Richard Harris. Can you believe Richard Harris was the most demanded star in the previous video? It's true. Richard Harris, the Irish actor and notorious bad boy, was a larger-than-life figure known for his love of living on the edge. A true rebel in his younger days, Harris embraced a hedonistic lifestyle that often revolved around excessive drinking and wild partying. He relished the belief that life should be lived to its fullest, and he certainly proved it. Famous for his confrontations with fellow actors and random passers-by, Harris frequented the pubs of Twickenham, where his presence was expected during rugby matches. P.J. Clark's in New York was another favorite haunt, where the bartender would line up six double vodkas at the mere sight of him. Malachy's, an Irish pub in the city, witnessed both his drinking and his brawls. Harris had a reputation for consuming copious amounts of alcohol. During the 1970s, he was known to down two bottles of vodka daily, followed by a mix of brandy and port in the evenings. While filming in Hawaii, he developed a fondness for a local cocktail that had him attempting to halt traffic with his fists. Doctors warned Harris that he had only 18 months to live unless he stopped drinking. In a dramatic farewell to alcohol, he chose to bid adieu with two bottles of Chateau Margaux 1947 at the Jockey Club in Washington. Although he eventually returned to drinking, he reportedly limited himself to a pint of Guinness before bedtime in his later years. Harris was surrounded by a group of legendary Hellraisers, including Peter O'Toole, Richard Burton, and Oliver Reed, until Burton's passing. Even during the filming of Harry Potter, he would join Alan Rickman and Kenneth Branagh for pub outings, often extending their drinking sessions until the early hours of the morning. While alcohol nearly destroyed Harris and strained his relationships, he lived his life with immense enjoyment and delivered remarkable performances. His drinking escapades were legendary, such as the time he attempted to drive a truck under a bridge marked Clearance 12 Feet after a few pints, resulting in the bridge collapsing. His witty exchanges with police officers, like waiting for his house to pass while lying in the street, showcased his quick thinking and irreverent charm. Silence! Number 2. Montgomery Cliff. Montgomery Clift, with his captivating presence and earnest countenance, left an indelible mark on Hollywood. He portrayed characters who were desperate, drunken, and deceived, reflecting the tragic trajectory of his own life. A car accident during the peak of his career left him in constant pain, and he sought solace in alcohol, ultimately leading to his untimely death. The narrative of suffering and self-destruction has shaped our perception of him today. While some biographies suggest that Clift turned to drinking due to the shame he felt about his homosexuality, his own words reveal a deeper struggle. He grappled with the challenge of remaining sensitive and vulnerable while navigating the demands of his profession. His perpetual question to himself, as he once scribbled in his journal, was how to remain thin-skinned, vulnerable, and still alive. For Clift, the task proved impossible. Clift once said, quote, the closer we come to the negative, to death, the more we blossom. Sadly, he ventured too close to the edge and descended into his own personal abyss. Thus, in the collective imagination, he remains frozen in time, encapsulating the essence of his unforgettable performances, marked by his striking cheekbones, resolute jawline, and the haunting gaze of a magnificent, proud, and tragically broken soul. Number 3. William Holden William Holden, a legendary actor, graced the silver screen with his talent and charisma for decades. From his early breakthrough in Golden Boy to his acclaimed performances in films like Sunset Boulevard and The Bridge on the River Kwai, Holden established himself as one of the greatest actors of his time. However, behind the scenes, he fought a lifelong battle with alcoholism. 
By the 1960s, the toll of excessive drinking began to show on Holden's once chiseled looks. As Hollywood shifted its focus to younger stars, he found himself losing roles and facing a decline in his career. The setback only drove him further into the depths of alcoholism. Despite continuing to deliver noteworthy performances in films like The Wild Bunch and The Towering Inferno, Holden's days as the leading man were waning. In 1981, Holden was living in Santa Monica, California, maintaining a reclusive and private lifestyle. He often vanished for days without notice, leaving his neighbors in curiosity and concern. It was in his apartment on Ocean Avenue that tragedy struck. One fateful day, the building manager, Bill Martin, overcome by worry, decided to investigate Holden's prolonged absence. Ah, kid, I'll show you a step I learned in L.A. Entering the apartment with a passkey, Martin made a shocking discovery. The apartment was dark, save for the flickering television. Using a flashlight, he found Holden's lifeless body on the floor. Clad in a robe and shirt, it appeared as if he had been attempting to dress himself before his demise. The autopsy report revealed a disturbing scene. Empty bottles of vodka and beer were scattered around, indicating Holden's ongoing struggle with alcohol. A large amount of blood surrounded the body, suggesting a serious injury. It was determined that he had tripped on a rug and struck his head on the nightstand with such force that it left an indentation on the wall. There were eight bloody Kleenexes found next to his body and a working telephone just inches away from him. In his weakened state, Holden likely tried to stop the bleeding, but the severity of the injury overcame him. Tragically, he had been dead for several days before his discovery. Number 4. Gail Russell Gail Russell, an actress who never aspired to stardom, found herself thrust into the spotlight due to her stunning looks. A shy and introverted child, she preferred the solace of her room to socializing. But when a Paramount executive noticed her beauty, her mother convinced her to try a screen test. In 1949, Russell married actor Guy Madison, although rumors swirled of a romantic involvement with her co-star John Wayne. Her marriage to Madison was tumultuous and ended in divorce in 1954. During this time, Russell's drinking escalated, and by 1952, her film career had stalled. The strain of a divorce case involving Wayne exacerbated her struggles with alcoholism, leading to multiple arrests for drunk driving. Seeking help, she entered a sanitarium in Seattle for treatment. In 1955, following her divorce, Russell made a comeback with a role in Seven Men From Now, produced by John Wayne himself. She appeared in several more films, but her battle with alcohol continued. Then it hit me, and everything fell into place. Tragically, in August 1961, Russell was found dead in her LA apartment. The cause of death was reported as acute and chronic alcoholism. Number 5. Spencer Tracy Let me first ask you, can you imagine alcohol appearing on nearly every page of someone's biography? Alcohol played a leading role in the tumultuous life of legendary actor Spencer Tracy. Throughout James Curtis's comprehensive biography, booze becomes an ever-present character, appearing on nearly every page. Tracy's struggle with alcohol was both destructive and widely known. Doctor's notes from a 1942 visit to Johns Hopkins shed light on his drinking history, revealing that Tracy would embark on alcoholic binges following the completion of a movie, lasting for about a week or ten days every eight months. Despite knowing the harm it caused him, Tracy couldn't resist the allure of alcohol. He would seclude himself in luxury hotels, missing engagements and disappointing those around him. Tracy's guilt over his alcoholism ran deep a torment that fueled his self-destructive behavior. Even after five years of sobriety, he confessed to yearning for a martini as he gazed longingly at it. His friend, director Joseph Mankiewicz, acknowledged Tracy's guilt and the need for it to accompany his battle against alcoholism. Tracy's struggle was marked by profound guilt, shame, and the self-inflicted wounds of his addiction, leaving an indelible mark on his life and career. Number 6. Rita Hayworth 
In the late 1970s, iconic actress Rita Hayworth faced a challenging period in her life when news outlets reported on her battle with alcoholism. These stories revealed that she had been taken to Hogue Hospital in Newport Beach, where she was unable to consent to treatment independently. During this difficult time, Hayworth found herself living alone and struggling to cope with her circumstances. However, a chance encounter with a fan and artist from Newport Beach changed the course of her life. Recognizing her struggles, he offered his support and invited her to stay with him for a short trip. Concerned for her well-being, he diligently looked after her. Unfortunately, on one occasion when he had to briefly leave home, he returned to find Hayworth barricaded inside, seeking refuge. Determined to help her, he managed to reach her and arranged for her to receive professional assistance at Hogue Hospital. Regrettably, this marked the last time he would see the iconic actress. When they had the earthquake in San Francisco back in 1906. Number 7. Judy Garland Judy Garland, the beloved actress known for her iconic role as Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz, battled numerous personal struggles throughout her life. Among these struggles was her battle with alcohol abuse. How did she find herself caught in the grip of addiction? What led her down this destructive path? Garland's journey into addiction was influenced by the demanding studio system she was thrust into at a young age and her tumultuous relationship with her mother. Reports suggest that she was introduced to pills as early as age 10, and by her late teens, she had become dependent on them. As her career soared, so did her addiction, and she turned to various substances to cope with the pressures of fame and maintain her grueling schedule. Tragically, the combination of an unstable upbringing, a demanding industry, and substance abuse proved overwhelming for the talented star. In 1969, at the age of 47, Garland's life was cut short, with her death ruled a suicide caused by barbiturates, underscoring the devastating consequences of her battle with alcohol abuse. Number 8. Alan Ladd Alan Ladd, a Hollywood actor who emerged from poverty, captivated audiences with his portrayal of principled lone heroes in over 40 films during the 1940s and 1950s. His most notable role was in the beloved Western classic Shane, 1953. Ladd's legacy extended beyond his acting career, as he was the father of Alana Ladd, David Ladd, and Alan Ladd Jr., who later became a renowned producer and studio executive. Despite his success, Ladd faced a series of health issues, including shingles and a severe hand injury that led to gangrene. Struggling with insomnia, he turned to a combination of sedatives and alcohol to find relief and sleep. Tragically, on January 29, 1964, at the age of 50, Ladd was found dead at his Palm Springs home from an overdose of sedatives and alcohol. He rests at Forest Lawn Cemetery in Glendale, California, while his star continues to shine on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, Palm Springs Walk of Stars, and the Arkansas Walk of Fame in Hot Springs. I'm all right, Joey. Number 9. Glenn Ford Glenn Ford, the acclaimed actor of Hollywood's golden era, faced a battle with alcohol that had profound consequences on his life. His drinking problem became so severe that it nearly took his life and left him unable to walk for 10 years before his passing in 2006 at the remarkable age of 90. The bottom line is, you won't want to miss this revelation. Alongside his struggles with alcohol, Ford's personal life was marked by a string of romantic relationships that garnered attention. From a one-night stand with Marilyn Monroe to a six-month fling with Judy Garland, and a tumultuous 40-year on-and-off affair with Rita Hayworth, his love life was filled with both passion and turbulence. Despite a 16-year marriage to Eleanor Powell, Ford went on to marry three more times, pursuing relationships with younger women who ultimately took advantage of his wealth and left him. Number 10. Mary Astor Mary Astor, the acclaimed American actress known for her roles in classic films like The Maltese Falcon and The Great Lie, had a complex personal life filled with ups and downs. Despite her professional success and an Oscar win, she faced challenges in her relationships. 
A highly publicized divorce and custody battle exposed her private affairs through her diary. Along with these troubles, Astor battled alcoholism for two decades, turning to drinking as a coping mechanism. However, in 1949, she sought help by entering a sanitarium for alcoholics after a suicide attempt and a nervous breakdown. Through Alcoholics Anonymous and her faith, she found recovery and continued her career in the entertainment industry until her passing in 1987 at the age of 81. I've got nobody to help me if you won't help me. Number 11. Larry Hagman Larry Hagman, renowned for his role on Dallas, battled a severe addiction to alcohol that ultimately contributed to health issues and an untimely death from throat cancer at the age of 81. So, what's the point of sharing Larry Hagman's story? Consuming an astonishing five bottles of champagne daily, Hagman's excessive drinking led to end-stage cirrhotic liver disease, increasing his susceptibility to cancer. In 1995, he underwent a life-saving liver transplant after it was discovered that his liver had been severely damaged by alcohol-induced cirrhosis. Listen to what Hagman said, quote, in the heyday of Dallas, it got to the point where I showed up for work about 6.30 in the morning, and by around 9, I might have opened a bottle of champagne, which I would nurse until about noon. By lunch, I might start on another half bottle of champagne. I would go through about three bottles a day, sometimes with people who would drop by the set, but mostly by myself. I just kept that steady drip going. Often, I would drink five bottles of champagne a day. End quote. Number 12. John Wayne John Wayne was given special treatment and his demands were met without question. One of his peculiar requests was to shoot his scenes before noon. Why? Because as the day progressed, Wayne would become as mean as a rattlesnake after a few drinks. He had a reputation for being a mean drunk, and his colleagues were well aware of it. Although he may not have recognized it as a drinking problem, he had a fondness for booze. Interestingly, filming wouldn't commence until Wayne had completed his morning bowel movement. Executives and directors would be left wondering why they weren't starting, only to discover that Wayne hadn't yet had his business done. In those days, people often drank without considering the importance of water unless they were mixing the two. Wayne's habit of drinking without enough water may have impacted his digestion, leading to potential constipation and making it difficult for him to have a fresh start in the mornings like his co-stars. His habitual drinking made it more challenging for him to maintain a regular shooting schedule on set. Yes, I'm feeling my lick. Number 13. Sterling Hayden Sterling Hayden was known to be a heavy drinker during the time of film production. The film showcases his rambling conversations with the filmmakers, where he indulges in wine and even smokes hashish. As a result, his thoughts become diffused and the discussions tend to stretch far beyond their natural course. The filmmakers had hoped that Hayden would consume less alcohol during filming, but their wish remained unfulfilled. Hayden himself shares anecdotes about his drinking, including a humorous encounter with a panhandler. He tells of seeing a panhandler and, while getting ready to give the man money, asking him, how are you fixed for change? The panhandler, deciding that Mr. Hayden looked even worse than he did, answered, Brother, this morning I can't spare a dime. But first, beware of the unexpected twist in this story. Despite his apologies and bewilderment about his drinking habits, he admits that he is not particularly unhappy. Quote, what confuses me, if you'll excuse me, he says, is I ain't all that unhappy. So why do I drink? I don't know, end quote. One morning, he describes having fallen into the canal the night before and very nearly drowning before being rescued by the son who lived with him. Number 14. Gig Young Gig Young, the accomplished American actor known for his award-winning performance in They Shoot Horses, Don't They?, and his role in the iconic Twilight Zone episode, Walking Distance, met a tragic and shocking end. On that fateful afternoon of October 19, 1978, 
In his Manhattan apartment, Young pointed a revolver at the back of his wife's head, Kim Schmidt, and pulled the trigger, ending her life instantly. Following this horrific act, Young turned the gun on himself, ending his own life at the age of 64. They had been married for only three weeks, making Kim Young's fifth wife. You might be asking yourself, what could drive someone to commit such a horrific act? The motive behind the incident remains unclear, as there was no note left behind. Gig Young's career had been marred by the destructive forces of alcohol and pills. His addiction to the tranquilizer Valium, coupled with heavy alcohol consumption, took a toll on his professional life. He was even fired from the set of the comedy film Blazing Saddles on his first day of shooting due to his collapse caused by substance abuse. Despite his personal struggles, Young managed to deliver memorable performances, including his notable role in the Twilight Zone episode. However, his battle with addiction ultimately led him to suite 1BB of the Osborne Apartments on West 57th Street in New York City, where he tragically ended his own life with a 38 caliber bullet. The story of Gig Young serves as a somber reminder of the devastating impact of substance abuse on individuals and their loved ones. What do you want? Sit down. Number 15. Marie Prevost Now some of you may be wondering, who was Marie Prevost? Well, Marie Prevost, a talented actress of the early Hollywood era, tragically succumbed to acute alcoholism at the young age of 40. Her untimely death went unnoticed for two days until her dog's incessant barking caught the attention of concerned neighbors. It was then that a houseboy discovered her lifeless body. Inside her room, the police found several empty liquor bottles and a promissory note addressed to Joan Crawford, totaling $110. The Hollywood community was deeply saddened by the loss, and at Prevost's funeral, attended by luminaries such as Crawford, Clark Gable and Barbara Stanwyck, her legacy was honored. In a testament to her contributions to the motion picture industry, Prevost was posthumously awarded a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Her tragic fate, along with that of others, prompted the creation of the motion picture and television Country House and Hospital, providing medical care for industry professionals. Prevost's story serves as a reminder of the toll that addiction can take and the importance of supporting those in need within the entertainment community. Number 16. Broderick Crawford Broderick Crawford, best known for his role as Chief Matthews in the TV series Highway Patrol, battled a debilitating drinking problem throughout his career. The demands of the weekly show only exacerbated his struggle. To accommodate his condition, the crew had to get creative. Some scenes that appeared as if Crawford was casually leaning against a wall were actually shot while he lay on the floor. They cleverly redesigned the set to give the illusion of an upright wall when viewed from above. Unfortunately, Crawford's real-life struggles with alcohol mirrored those of his character. He faced numerous arrests and DUI charges, leading to a suspended driver's license. Ironically, he became known within the California Highway Patrol as Old 502, referencing the police radio code for drunken driving. Even on set, Crawford resorted to bribing people to bring him alcohol, causing tensions with the show's production company and strained relationships with both the CHP and CIV. His drinking became such a concern that the show had to rely on their CHP technical advisor to keep him sober. In the end, alcohol took its toll on Crawford, leaving a lasting impact on his personal and professional life. Before we continue, I want to ask you something. Have you or someone you know faced similar challenges? Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments section below. It's not too sweet. I repeat, it's not too sweet. Number 17. Ava Gardner Ava Gardner, the silver screen legend and Hollywood bad girl, was a force to be reckoned with. Known for her hard partying ways, foul-mouthed wit, and undeniable beauty, she lived life on her own terms. Can I be completely honest with you? Ava Gardner's journey through fame was also marred by a struggle with alcoholism. Alcohol played a significant role in Gardner's life, fueling her passionate relationships, wild fights, and uninhibited sexual experimentation. It unleashed her inhibitions and allowed her to fully embrace her larger-than-life personality. 
One infamous drinking story took place during the filming of Night of the Iguana, when Gardner refused to shoot a night scene, opting to drink instead. Director John Huston joined her in downing tequila shots until they were both too intoxicated to continue. Gardner's spirited antics weren't limited to film sets either. She was known for her over-exuberance, whether it was peeing in the lobby of the Ritz Madrid or drenching a bar owner's trousers with a martini. Her unapologetic behavior resulted in being banned not only from the Ritz Madrid, but also from the prestigious St. Regis in New York. While alcohol may have fueled Gardner's escapades, it was cigarettes, not booze, that ultimately took her life. Was it you who kissed me? Number 18. Albert Finney Albert Finney, the talented English actor known for his remarkable performances in films like Tom Jones, Murder on the Orient Express, and Aaron Brockovich, had an illustrious career that left a lasting impact on the world of cinema. Throughout most of his life, Finney was a heavy drinker, indulging in multiple pints during lunchtime and beyond. Reflecting on his past, he once candidly admitted, I used to drink a lot. I mean, a lot. It was fun at the time, but now I look back and think, how did I do that? In 1984, after being diagnosed with kidney cancer, he made the courageous decision to quit drinking. Surviving the disease, he continued to captivate audiences with his talent until 2012. Sadly, in 2019, Finney passed away at the age of 82, leaving behind a legacy of extraordinary performances and a reminder of the personal battles he faced throughout his life. Can you imagine the struggles he faced while trying to maintain his career and personal life? Number 19. Lon Chaney Jr. Lon Chaney Jr., known for his talent as a character actor, battled with alcoholism and depression. His heavy drinking took a toll on his health, leading to cancer and liver disease. After filming Abbott and Costello Meet Frankenstein, he even attempted suicide. But let's be honest for a moment, Lon's journey was not a glamorous one. His drinking habits got him into trouble, including being banned from William Randolph Hearst's mansion for trying to get Marion Davies drunk. Despite accusations of being drunk during a live TV show, some defended his performance as professional. He shared a wild dressing room dynamic with Broderick Crawford, where they would get drunk and end up exchanging blows. <laughs> Number 20. Bella Lugosi Bella Lugosi, the legendary horror star, had a tumultuous and tragic relationship with alcohol. In the later years of his life, he became both a morphine addict and a notorious drunk. His addiction and alcohol abuse took a toll on his mental state leading to disturbing incidents that showcased his descent into darkness. One particular incident on a film set epitomized Lugosi's struggle with alcohol. Director Ed Wood, who worked with Lugosi on several films, found him hiding behind a curtain, consumed by his addiction. Tears streamed down Lugosi's face as he held a gun, pointing it directly at Wood. In that intense moment, Lugosi uttered haunting words to Wood. Eddie, I'm going to die tonight. I want to take you with me. It was a chilling expression of Lugosi's despair and desperation. But Wood, who himself battled with alcoholism, understood the depths of Lugosi's torment. He recognized what Lugosi needed in that moment was to find solace. He retrieved the requested scotch and presented Lugosi with his favorite drink, a Boilermaker. As Lugosi took a sip of the comforting concoction, the gun was lowered and the tension began to dissipate. The alcohol offered temporary respite, allowing Lugosi to drink himself into a state of slumber. We come to the end of our journey through the lives of Hollywood's notorious alcoholics. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more captivating content. Stay tuned.